All right, we're here at Star Fitness. We're gonna do a workout here today. I've been primarily working out at home, but I just wanted to give you guys a little update, life update, tell you what's going on with me, what's going on with the club. And we're gonna do a shoulder and arm workout today in the gym. It shouldn't take more than 30, 35 minutes, I believe, and go in and hitting it quick if you're busy. And there's these two ways to approach it. One is, am I gonna do several short workouts per week or am I gonna do like three longer ones? Lately, I've been doing several short workouts per week. We've got a protein drink in us. I just had a liquid whey protein drink this morning and coffee was my pre-workout of choice. So let's get it. All right. 115 pounds. I'm not done that. I'm not done this in probably two weeks. We went on vacation, and then I I had strep right before vacation, so I didn't work out that much that week. So we'll see how it goes. Sometimes I'll do a little push press on the last rep. All right, so we're gonna do some lateral raises in the garage at home. One of my favorites to do is a leaning lateral raise like this. And a lot of people do leaning lateral raises like this. But we want to put the uh, stretch position in a lot of tension. So down here, this is where it's tough. So I'll do leaning lateral raises at home. I'll do them lying, lying on a bench like Arnold's. But when I'm at a gym, I intentionally do something a little different, except for overhead press. I just love overhead press. So I'm gonna do some cable ones. And check this out. I like to go behind my back a little bit, stand back here. And of course, you wanna be, you don't wanna be to the side on a lateral raise. You wanna be a little bit in front of you in the mid scapular plane. So I like to come out here. And the stretch right here is gnarly. Feels so good. This is a warm-up set, by the way. But the stimulus is there. So we're gonna stop about four reps shy of failure for the warm-up. Yeah, it's probably more like three reps shot. Feels really, really nice. I'm personally not a fan of like overdeveloped shoulders though. I even lowered my shoulder volume back in 2019 before I competed in 2020 because I didn't want my shoulders to look that big. If you look at the old school bodybuilders, they all had smaller shoulders, relatively speaking. I think it's just because their chest and biceps and triceps were so big. And you see the guys today, like Chris Bumstead, who I'm a huge fan of, but all the classic physique guys, and definitely men's physique and open, their shoulders look so distorted and just weird to me. I don't like big delts, but you still gotta train them. And the truth of the matter is, when you are like me, and you have a wider hip structure, to create more of a V taper on stage, you gotta get wider. So I did really focus on delts in this off season. And, uh, you know, we're gonna do this cut, finish the cut, and then when I get into the fall, we're gonna go back into a little bit of a building mode. And I'm definitely gonna be focusing on two things, back and delts, for whenever we put on the men's physique trunks again. I'll probably do classic physique too. That's the thing about natural bodybuilding people don't know, is you get on stage, most of the guys do all three classes. Open bodybuilding, men's physique, classic physique. I mean, you prepped hard, you might as well. I just will never, never put on the men's open bodybuilding trunks. Sparkly G-strings. Believe it or not, not for me. notice in the mirror I'm doing a great job tanning my legs this year my upper body's got some catching up to do look how dark my legs are 
I wore short shorts to the beach too. So I'll got sun up to here. I like to finish with arms, you know, since I'm only doing one exercise today, I'm gonna take it to failure, to functional failure. And then you noticed I wasn't going all the way down on those last sets, on those last reps. I was doing some lengthened partials. Lengthened means up here the tricep is in the lengthened position. And down here it's in the flex position, contracted position. But when it's in the lengthened position, that's when you're gonna get the most bang for your buck and the most muscle growth. So a lot of guys like, you know, this is useless. You wanna be making sure you're getting that stretch right here to get the most out of your tricep training. All right, biceps are one thing I don't go super heavy on. Occasionally I will on like a barbell curl, but just grabbing some 25s. We're gonna get a good stretch and a good peak contraction. I talked about the importance of the lengthened position on triceps. Same for biceps, but I have noticed for me, my biceps are doing better. And they're a weak point because my long arms and long insertions. But whenever I'm focusing on the peak contraction, my biceps feel a lot more sore and work the next day. So I get that good squeeze at the top. I also am picturing my pinky turning up just a little bit at the top. Yeah, it's gnarly. I will say, I can fly a little closer to the sun on triceps than biceps. I still have a pretty good little, I don't know if part of my tendon is popped out around the bone, but I have to be really careful about tendonitis, so I will rarely go to failure on bicep training. It's one reason I work with parents mostly, but I am passionate about helping guys in their 20s. Normally, unfortunately, my advice falls to the ground. They don't listen to it, but it is important that you understand this concept. Just because you can do something, it doesn't mean you should. And I learned that the hard way. Uh, when I was, what, 27? That summer, I went, man, I went balls to the wall. I did so much volume, I was doing weighted chips, or weighted chin-ups, weighted dips, and, you know, I always put chains on my close fit bench press. Sloppy form, I looked like Branch Warren, blood and guts training, and I learned the hard way, you have to pick either intensity or volume. You can't do super high intensity and super high volume. And that's what a lot of guys in their 20s do because they're single and they want the best results and they have the time to spend at the gym. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Nothing more frustrating than having to take, well, I had to take about 12 months off of my normal training to let this heal. Couldn't train arms directly for 16 months. But God makes everything work together for good. During that time period, I checked my ego, both weight-wise, lifting-wise, and spiritually. I had some ego checking to do. I had a problem with using the gym for therapy, using the gym to deal with my anger and issues, instead of, as your Sunday school teacher said, giving it to God and God taught me a lot of lessons about humility and that's when I started learning and studying to be a personal trainer.